So, brace yourself, ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, because I'm just going down to get the topic of discussion for my next exciting YouTube video. I'll catch up with you in a few seconds. Hey guys, uh, welcome to my makeshift garden workshop. Um, videos must go on, so I just had to make do with um, what I had at my disposal. So uh, yeah, this is my little workstation for the day to bring you some more YouTube content. Um, anyway, what we're going to talk about today is this guy. This, my friends, is a brace tool or a hand brace. You may have seen one before or recognise it in some capacity and until the last 12 months or so, as much as I knew these drills existed, I never really considered using a tool like this because A, it's slower and B, it takes longer to do a job, which kind of go hand in hand. So for me, um, electric or more to the point battery drills um, were the only way because nowadays speed is everything when you're on a job site. And most of the time when you get good at using those drills, um, you can be pretty accurate too. However, it's always a however, um, there is a reason why these have stood the test of time. Um, the technology is proven today just as much as it was for us woodworkers sort of 100 years ago, 70 years ago, 50 years ago. Um, and the reason why this tool or these tools appeal to me is because it's such a practical tool and most importantly, it's at human speed. So what I mean by that is if you're using a power drill driver or a drill driver with a battery into a finished surface and something slips or triggers it to go faster than you wanted it to, all of a sudden you've damaged the surface of a workpiece that probably you might not have been able to afford to. However, with a hand brace, um, you would very rarely ever do such a thing. And the control you have when using a tool like this is pretty much foolproof. Um, so this is my brace, obviously. Um, it's a second hand one, obviously, but it's in perfect working order. And my plan might be to clean up the handles a little bit, but not remove too much of the age. I feel like because it's working perfectly, um, there's really no reason to sort of tamper with it too much. And as the old saying goes, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. So. Um, this one has a, a ratchet function on it um, for forwards or backwards operation, which we'll get to soon. Uh, I will note that these brace tools do come in a variety of sizes depending on your purpose. So by that, I mean how far the handle comes out from the center line of the tool itself. So this would be considered the center line, and this is obviously the handle. Um, so how far it comes out from the center line so the shorter it is the less torque it has whereas the more it comes out the bigger the turning circle and therefore it provides a lot more torque so that might be perfect for if you need to do a lot more heavier boring whereas this one will still do that it just might take a little bit more arm power so anyway let's have a look at how the bits are secured in this so this section here it's called a shell. You can call it a chuck if you want to. And it comes apart like this just by unscrewing it. And inside here is a jaw, which is difficult to get out. But that's the jaw. It looks like this. And as you can see, if I take a big bit, when it goes inside and clamps down as if you were tightening the chuck around the thread it creates a really good union so with the drill bits the end it's got a square tapered bit and this is known as a tang so obviously as i just showed you it fits around the bill the fits inside the jaw like that and clamps down. You can see inside there, there's some V grooves on either side, which helps, helps it create a really good bond and unity inside there. 
and then once it's secured inside the chuck and screwed down it creates a really secure hold so that being said now that we know all that to put it back together that just slides in inside that channel there the jaw and then we slip that or the the shell or the chuck back over until it engages with the thread and then we can tighten it down then all we need to do put that in there like that and then tighten it down and as you tighten it the bit will self-center inside the shell and then it's ready to use so as I was saying earlier the other mechanism to note on this is the ratchet so what is a ratchet and why do we need it so if I turn the rat the little collar to the right like that it allows the ratchet you can hear the ratchet engage there so this would be to start boring the hole and if I turn it to the left it allows us to extract the bit out of the hole and you're probably asking yourself well you probably want to ask me why do we need this so sometimes we're working in a place or a tight space like between some joists or under stairs or in a cabinet or a cupboard where you just can't achieve a full circular motion with the brace but you obviously need to bore a hole so twisting it one way obviously allows the the hole to be bored as i showed you sorry that's yeah that's the right way and then twisting it the other way allows you to extract the drill bit from the hole regarding the handle it rotates to uh, save any friction and blisters on your hand as well as the pad on the end so you can apply pressure to the pad on the end using your your belly or whatever other point of contact you want to make and then you can turn the drill you don't necessarily have to be in a tight working space but if you are it still works in exactly the, the same way depending on your working position and if you're working upright you would just apply pressure with your hand or even your head um, to that end pad to apply pressure from the top also so i'd obviously like to be able to show you the brace in action but due to my current circumstances i don't exactly have a workshop right now however however with regards to the bits themselves um, right on the tip there is what we call a snail. So I'll actually show you on the bigger one, which you can just unscrew the chuck and take the bit out. So you can see there's a little snail, what we call a snail on the end, or you might call it a lead screw. And it has a threaded conical shape that works to pull itself into the workpiece, into the workpiece, depending on what way you're working. Um, these threads on this are 1.5 millimeters apart so for every rotation of the brace those threads penetrate into the wood 1.5 millimeters and that includes when we start cutting the actual hole in the wood with the auger itself so as we start to drill we come in to the full depth of the snail and then the raker and these are the rakers these bits here you can see that now what they will begin to actually bore the overall width of the hole because you can see that's the width that the hole is going to be and whether it's the snail or the actual auger itself every turn of the brace it'll penetrate into the wood 1.5 millimeters so when drilling um, it's good practice to bore through the wood until the tip of the snail comes through the other side then we can extract the actual auger turn the wood over and there'll be a small hole obviously on the other side and then we can start the process again from the other side so we got a perfectly um, centered hole right through the piece of work 
that piece of um, wood that you're working on and it'll leave a per perfectly clean cut on both sides of the wood with no tear out which obviously makes using a tool like this um, in this method a very neat way to do work so there are adapter bits for these brace tools that you can buy that go into the end of the shell here and they allow you to drill, use drill driver or screwdriver bits as well as a whole wide range of more modern bits to secure or sorry to drive in screws or even countersink holes too however unfortunately i don't have one of those right now but that's just effectively uh extension that comes out here you tighten the chuck and then you can just add um whatever whatever else you want to like a more modern drill bit or a more modern driver bit into the end of that to um you know do whatever work you need to do. So now I'm going to tell you probably the most important part of this video. To achieve quality work and neat holes requires sharp drill bits. So you can keep sharpening these for the rest of their life. It could be 80 years. If you take good care of these and only if you look after them, you'll get quality work. The process to sharpen these bits generally involves first removing any surface muck on them um, with a wire brush and perhaps steel wool if you like. A bit of WD-40 generally works a treat with that. And then you can put them in a vise. Um, a quick tip, only ever clamp it in the vise using the stem, never on the tang here um, because you don't want to damage that as that is what's holding the actual bit inside the chuck on the brace itself um, and then you just take a needle file so a needle file you might know what a needle file is if you've ever seen someone or you've ever sharpened a chainsaw chain yourself you use a needle chain needle file to do that job um, you use a needle file on these two so starting with the cutters um, these are the cutters here and here if you can see that near the snail that's the snail remember and these are the cutters um, always work on the inside face so by inside face i mean like that never from the outside that's the outside that's the outside because you don't want to reduce the thickness of the bit as that's the size of the hole it's meant to be cutting so when you're filing it you can file it back and forth like this while trying to maintain the angle of the of the bit the manufacturer has set until you hit an edge so you're just filing until you hit that edge and as you go you can sort of feel it with your finger to see whether or not you've achieved a nice sharp edge on it with respect to the outside the only time you'll ever need to touch the outside is to remove the burr that has been created from filing or sharpening, sharpening the in, inside. So you might call this residue from that filing process. Um, and then we need to think about the snail as well. So with respect to the point of the snail, you can use a flatter, small rasp style file. Say that five times fast. Flatter, small rasp style file and gently just create, obviously I can't use this for that, um, a fresh point on the tip, right on the tip, if it's required. This is kind of important because this is where you first set up the location of your hole, so kind of needs to be sharp for that reason. Um, and that's it, like they're the main, most important parts to sharpen. Um, and then once it's in there, obviously these are that's starting the hole and the cutters are boring the hole. So, and then the rest just follows through. So that's kind of it. Um, when I got my one, I've got a bunch of different size auger bits. Obviously I haven't done anything about sharpening, sharpening them myself yet, but I will get around to them, around to it. Um, and I have these other boring spade type bits as well that are quite a bit shorter but need some uh, need some sharpening work as well so 
yeah, that kind of just about covers it. That's my brace tool. I uh, hope you found this video helpful and maybe it inspired you to uh, buy your own hand brace. Um, and that way, this knowledge can be um, passed down through further generations. Who knows? But yeah, it's good to keep the craft alive. Uh, if you have any questions or want to ask me anything, ask away in the comments below. Um, happy to answer any questions you might have and um, yeah I'll uh, get off the screen now and stop spinning this uh, around in my hand weirdly um, but yeah thanks for uh, watching this video and yeah I'll talk to you in the next one go well